Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about a new and improved faster way to save and load your objects textures uh, for props that have uh, contain multiple meshes. Okay, so let's get started. On the screen right now we have a single fan. All right, If I click on the fan you can see it consists, it consists of two parts. The sub prop is called the fan head here, which I can just move uh, out of the way. All right, let me just move it around if we want. I'm going to control Z that. All right, so we have the fan and the fan head. So let's take a look at the materials that each one of these uh, props consists of. So if we select the fan and go over here to materials, notice that the material list uh, contains three meshes here. There's the base, the frame, and the fan. All right, so the base is this base down here. All right, the frame is the wire frame surrounding the blades, and the fan are the blades of the fan. Okay, now if we click on the fan head item in the scene manager, we only have the fan and the frame. So that's only the, the, the blades and the wireframe. The base is not included. So the base is exclusive to the fan section here. It's a little bit of deconstruction there for you. Okay, so what we're going to do here is generally before if you wanted to save out the textures, uh, so let's take a look at the base for example first. If I wanted to save out these base textures, what I would normally do before is go down here to your texture settings, select the uh, texture channel that you want to save out, in this case the base color uh, channel or the diffuse channel, and go down here and just select save. Okay, this would save a PNG file. So I have a textures folder I've already set up here and we would save this as something like, for example, base diffuse. Okay, and save it as a PNG. And then if we go to that folder uh, right here, textures folder, you can see base diffuse saved out. All right, we can do the same thing with the bump map, for example. We just go ahead and save that separately and we'll call it, uh, we'll call it base uh, normal or bump, doesn't really matter, okay. Save that out, and then we'll go back to that folder. There it is, base, normal, base, diffuse, okay? So as you can imagine, that process can be quite tedious if you have a, uh, a prop with a lot, number of different meshes, a number of different materials. Doing it one by one can uh, uh, take up unnecessary amounts of time. Okay, so uh, one faster way to do that is you can go down here as well, and you can select Save all material textures. So what that'll do is that'll save all the texture maps for one of these base mesh or one of these meshes. Okay. So for example, if we want to do the base, uh, for example, we want to save all these in one go, we can go to uh, select the base and go down here to save all material textures. Okay. And we'll create a new folder. We'll just call this a uh, base. Okay. And you just need to make sure you have the folder selected. So it appears right here under folder and select folder. All right. And then let's go back to that textures folder here and under the base folder that we just created you can find all those texture maps from the base section okay however that's you know only part of the uh, trick uh, it would be ideal if you can save all these meshes and all the materials together okay uh, thankfully we with the icon 7.21 we now have the ability to do that so if we go up here now if we select doesn't really matter what we select in this case we can select the base whatever the fan okay just make sure you select the fan item over here and you can go up here to save all object textures. So it'll save all the textures in the entire object, okay? So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Let's go to save all object textures and we'll just go back to our main folder. We'll create a new folder called fan, okay? And then just make sure we have that fan appearing in the folder. Don't double click it, just select it. Okay, and let's go ahead and select folder. So what happened now is it saved out all those objects, uh, all those meshes, uh, all their diffuse maps and everything individually. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look in the textures folder. Okay, so back here, so now we have that fan folder, and within the fan folder, we'll have a hierarchy. Okay, so uh, pay attention to the hierarchy here as it corresponds with the scene manager. So we have the fan root, which is the fan item right here. And within the fan, we have the fan node, which is this item, and we have the fan head node, which is the fan head node item right here. So within the fan head node, as you can recall, if we select it, we're just the frame and the fan. So the, the blades and the wire frame surrounding the blade. That's all that's part of the fan head. So if we go back to our texture folder and we go to fan head node, we'll only have the fan and the frame. Okay, so the blades and the frame. So under fan mesh, we'll have fan material, and then we'll have all those materials that are part of the fan mesh right here okay so these same materials right there and if we go back under fan mesh or sorry under fan head node rather we have the frame as well so frame materials and all those materials show up there so let's go back to the fan root and then we have the fan node and the base mesh 
base material and all the base uh, meshes right here. We even have a specular map, uh, specular map if you want to chain from PBR to a traditional shader type. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, the coolest thing is you can actually load these in as well, all at once. Uh, before I get into that, uh, I'll show you another method you can use if you want to use materials instead of texture maps. There's another method you can use. So let's go back to our main textures folder here. And say, for example, we wanted to use iClone material files instead. We wanted to save those out. Well, let's go ahead and select the, uh, the fan. And let's select the base here. And then we can go up here under material list to just go ahead and select save. And when we do that, you can see it automatically saves as type I material file. So we can call this one base, for example. Okay, we'll just call it base, and it'll save as an iClone material file in that textures folder. Oops, we need to go ahead and, uh, not that, we need to select, uh, maybe we'll call, we'll call it uh, base material, not the same folder name. Okay, and go ahead and save. All right, and when that's saved, you can actually just uh, click and drag it in. You can load it individually. So let's go ahead and delete our uh, base material by selecting this uh, clear button here. So it'll just be a white base now. And if I want, I can load the material in through this uh, load right here. And you can see the base material. It's an eye material, okay? So this is what an iClone eye material file will look like. You can load it in that way, or you can simply go to your uh, Explorer folder as well, and you can click and drag. Uh, make sure you click and drag onto the correct area of your mesh as well. This is very important. So if I click and drag, make sure I click and drag it so my cursor is over top of the base right there. And when I load that in, boom, there you go, okay? So you can, uh, unfortunately, you can only do that for individual uh, meshes, okay? But the method I'm going to show you now how to uh, load them all in together, uh, each all the meshes together, is really cool. All right, so let's go ahead then, and what I'm going to do is we're going to go to our folder, into our fan here, and let's go into uh, all the diffuse maps. I'm going to load all these diffuse maps in Photoshop, okay? So I'm going to load up this uh, base diffuse in Photoshop here, and let's go back to the, uh, oops, where are we? There we go. And let's go back to the uh, fan node. Nope. Fan root. Nope. Fan head. Okay. So start. these are the blades here. So we'll load the blades into Photoshop. And back to our folder. Fan head and the frame. So we'll load the frame diffuse into Photoshop as well. All right. So now we have these three diffuse maps. So say for some reason, you know, we wanted to modify our our diffuse maps a little bit and just change them around a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to like filter, for example. Uh, let's create a filter gallery. Let's do something like ink outlines and uh, dark strokes. All right, that'll work just fine. Okay, just make it look a little bit different just so you can see the difference, okay? We'll go ahead and press OK for our base and then we'll go to our uh, fan diffuse and we'll just apply that as well. So Control F to just apply the same filter gallery there and to our frame and filter control F for our filter gallery there. And then we'll just save all these. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, control S actually, I guess. Save, save. Okay, now because we loaded these out into Photoshop, we didn't you know, launch them from iClone, they're not gonna update automatically. Okay, so basically when we go back to iClone, you see no difference because the I iClone has created temporary textures for this uh, prop right here. So uh, the cool thing here is if we want to load all those in together, I'm just going to go ahead and press, uh, hold the control key and click and drag and create a copy of my fan here. Now the important thing to note here is that the new fan is called fan with zero in parentheses, okay? Now when you load the texture maps, you have to make sure that the prop name is exactly the same as the one that you originally saved, okay? So let's go back to the uh, pro or the one that you originally launched the textures from. So let's go back to fan here, for example. And uh, I'm going to go ahead now and load all object textures. Okay, so this is going to replace every single object texture in the base, frame, and fan mesh. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you select the root uh, item, the root folder. Okay, not the fan folder that we created, but the root folder. Okay, and again, within that root folder, you remember where, what all that stuff is? Okay, so just select the root folder right here and go ahead and select folder. All right, so that loaded in all the textures uh, separately. So you can see the frame, the new diffuse texture, the fan, the new diffuse texture right there. Okay, it looks quite different from his uh, brother over here. If we try to do the same thing with the fan, for example, let's give that a shot. Let's go ahead and try the same thing. Load all object textures and fan root. What's going to happen is we're not going to be able to see those because... 
it's essentially looking for the fan folder and fan underscore root. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and press OK. So it only it'll only be applying to a couple of them. So let's go ahead and Control Z that. If we wanted to, uh, you know, uh, go ahead and save these out again with the fan zero item no, item name. Let's go ahead and save all object textures. We'll call this, uh, you know, new folder. We'll call it fan two. Okay, and select that. Okay, if we go into the folder uh, fan right here, fan2, you can see the root folder is called fan with the zero in parentheses, underscore, underscore, root. Okay, so you have to make sure that your naming conventions are correct. All right, I just wanted to show you that as an example. Let's take a look at another kind of example where this could be really super useful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my, uh, let's go ahead and delete this other fan here. And make this fan invisible for now and load in this uh, avatar slacker morph dude we'll just make him visible for now all right and uh, move a little bit over here now if we go over here to materials you can see especially for a character this is super useful because there's so many meshes in the character there's the eyelashes fingernails all this stuff like that right so obviously you wouldn't want to go around ha having to load in all these textures separately so thankfully we have this feature okay so we go ahead and save all object textures uh, we'll just, you know, create a new folder. We'll call it a slacker dude, whatever we want to call him. And make sure we have that folder. Boom. Okay, so it'll just take a second or two. And all those folders, all that stuff will now be saved. Looks like we should close the folder there accidentally. Slacker dude. So there's a slacker morph underscore root. Let's go and uh, see the Photoshop as the background, or iClone as the background there, rather. Uh, so slacker morph. Okay, the item right there and the root. And you can see all the different sections here. So we have the hair node, uh, for example. We have the eyes, the teeth, the uh, everything, basically. Slacker morph node, the body, okay, fingernail. And it's all categorized, you know, uh, according to the, the groups that are supposed to be, that's supposed to be set here, okay. And you can go ahead and load that in uh, really easily. I'm going to show one final example here. We'll take a look, a closer look at the folder structure. So I'm going to go ahead and make this slacker morph invisible. Load up this heavy duty uh, truck here, okay? Now, this one is from a uh, developer on Sketchfab we found. His name is uh, Willie de Carpentier. De Carpentry. Sorry if I butchered that name, but I uh, just wanted to show you the original item right here. Really cool looking uh, uh, heavy duty truck in Sketchfab. Let's go ahead and close this down for now. You can see we've kind of changed the uh, materials to a little bit of a yellow. Okay, so this one has uh, six, or sorry, rather five different meshes here. So we have the all these different items right here. And if we wanted to save these out, I'll go ahead and show you. So this is a very simple, just a one single uh, prop, but it has a number of different mesh groups for your materials. So if we save this out, let's go ahead uh, and create a new folder called Heavy Duty. Heavy Duty, there we go. And just, whoops, what did I do here? Whoops, Control X there. I think we, uh, okay, never mind. Okay, we're in the textures folder, good, okay. Select folder. So it's going to save up all those materials, all those texture files into that folder that I created there. Now, one thing to note, to load it up again there, is that uh, in under heavy duty here, you can see we have the, that's why the fan is there. Let's go ahead and delete that. The heavy duty root right here and the heavy duty node. Okay. So just one node. Okay. So one item right here, heavy duty node that corresponds with this. Okay. And under that, you can find the five different meshes, okay? Now, the naming structure, the naming convention of these is, for example, the car paint, one car paint, okay? What's going to happen is it'll, it'll use the, the mesh name, and then un, it'll create two underscores, okay? So this is actually two underscores. If we click on it, you can see it's one, two separate underscores, and then show the mesh. So the naming convention... Every time you use this, uh, save all object textures, you're going to have this. So you're going to have the props. Every mesh group is going to have whatever uh, the name it is, and then two underscores, and then it'll say mesh. Okay. Uh, before that, it'll have root, and then it'll have underscore, underscore, node. Okay. And then under, underscore, underscore, mesh. And then under mesh, you'll find the materials folder, underscore, underscore, materials. Okay. And then you'll find all the separate materials. So the car paint, uh, Right now we have props selected, so let's go find the uh, heavy duty node and the props, for example, props materials. So these will be the same ones as these ones right here. 
Okay, so just so you're aware of the folder structure that is created. Uh, two underscores and then your material or uh, so root and then node and then mesh and then material. And when the materials are named, they'll follow this naming convention you can see here. So there'll be two underscores. First, the material name, which in this case is one underscore car paint. Okay, that can be changed to whatever material name you choose. Uh, and then there's two underscores. And then the AO stands for ambient occlusion. The diffuse will stand for your diffuse or base color map. The metallic will stand for your metallic map. There's a normal that'll uh, stand for your uh, your normal map, just the purple normal map. And if you have a grayscale bump map, it'll have underscore underscore bump. Okay, so under, under, underscore underscore bump as opposed to normal. And here's your roughness slider. Also, in addition to that, if there's a uh, another diffuse or another metallic, so the material number, uh, the material name in this case doesn't really matter. However, if you have an underscore underscore anything, like material underscore underscore diffuse, for example, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to launch up this map in Photoshop really quickly. So I'm going to open it with uh, Photoshop. And we're going to make a copy, just a different copy here. And I'll show you what happens when you have two uh, uh, underscore underscore diffuse maps uh, as an example here. Okay, so we're just going to change this really quick. Let's do a quick change to the uh, hue and saturation. Let's colorize it real quick. Uh, make it a little a nice uh, solid blue there. And then we'll go save as. And we'll save it, uh, make sure we save it to that same folder there. Our textures, the heavy duty, heavy root, node, car paint. And there we go. Okay, so we're just going to call this, uh, we'll call it car underscore underscore diffuse. Okay, so notice there's two underscores there. And we're going to go to choose a PNG file. Okay, so you can see all the other PNGs. So this one's not going to be using the car paint material name, but it's going to be using just car. All right, so if I save this, Go ahead and press OK. We'll close down Photoshop for now. And, uh, oops, make sure we go, uh, nope, OK. So we have that uh, saved here. So car diffuse right there. And we have car paint diffuse. So there's two underscores and diffuse. So these two materials are going to conflict. So if I go ahead and maybe delete the base color map here and try to load in all the textures for this car, uh, car paint material here, let's go ahead and try that. Select the folder there. What's going to happen is it's going to come up with this notification here that the following texture files failed to load. And you'll see that it'll have car underscore underscore diffuse dot PNG. So this is the blue one that we uh, created that failed to load because we already have this yellow base color map. So if you just press OK, it's going to load that yellow base color map. However, let's go ahead and just uh, delete this one more time. And let's go into our uh, folder structure there. Let's uh, take this color map and just control X to let's go to this uh, folder before this higher folder on the hierarchy there and then we'll uh, go back in here so now if we go ahead and load it it's going to load this material regardless of the material name so car or car paint you can have it you know whatever you want you can uh, choose a name like goofy or something like that you can change it from car to uh, goofy okay it doesn't really matter what the name is if you have an, uh, two underscores followed by a diffuse it's going to load that map in place of the other in the absence of any other diffuse map so if we go ahead now and load that same folder structure in, right now what's going to happen is it's going to load that goofy uh, texture, okay? So no matter what we call it, if it has two underscores and a diffuse, it's going to load that map, and you can see here we have that purple color map there. Okay, so that's a little quick uh, tip for you there. Uh, so that's really about all there is to it, guys. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can always check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. So hopefully you learned a lot, and I hope to see you in the next video.